I am in London at the moment and I just finished attending the Global Excel Summit and I met a ton of Excel celebrities. Now people who work with Excel and are also big, they are kind of celebrities. I call them ex-celebrities. I don't know if that made sense or not, but if you just hear that one more time, I'm sure that'll make sense. Now, after hacking into my hotel room to make it a bit more presentable, I wanna talk about things or calculations that you often do in Excel that you want to replicate somehow in Power BI. And of course, I will talk about their nuances and discuss a lot of tips and tricks along the way. Shall we begin, my dear, as a Londoner would say it? Let's start. All right, the first calculation that I'd like to speak about is contribution analysis in Power BI. You do that in Excel, which simply means mix. What's the percentage mix? of every single item over the total. Let me just present to you the case that I'm working with. So here in Power BI, I have a very simple pivot table right here, which is where we have the year, and every single year is split into three different regions, and then we have a total right here. Now, I'd like to be able to find out that how much is every single region when divided by the total contributes to the mix of the years. Now, I'm gonna talk about two different ways of doing it. Now, because we have visual calculations in Power BI, one method, which is relatively easier, is also to do it via visual calculations. Let's just take a look at visual calculations first, then move over to DAX. So I'm just gonna maybe select on this particular visual, and the three dots right here, we have something called as a new calculation. I'm gonna do that, and this actually lands me in this new calculation area. I'm going to call this calculation as mix and start to write some calculation. Now, at the moment, I'm going to consider myself naive and I have no idea what formula am I going to use. So let's just try it out by looking in the user interface. Do we have something that hints us towards the right calculation that can actually find us the mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the FX right here and I'm gonna click right here, which is says percentage of the parent. That means that I wanna find out this value. What is it as the percentage of the parent, which is nothing but the total of the entire year. Let's just uh, zoom this a bit. And now it writes the divide function automatically. It says divide a field. Field simply means whatever uh, calculation you wanna divide. So divide this particular value by this particular value, which is the total right here, and it is gonna present the division automatically, right? Now, because we have to divide the numbers, the input in these fields are only going to be numbers that are your measure. So I'm gonna say, hey, why don't you take your total sales and divide that again by total sales? And if I just now maybe commit on this, press enter, and do the check mark right here. It actually gave me an error. Let's just go take a look at what the error is. Click on the edit calculation and the axis needs to be mentioned that it needs to be done row wise. So here I'm just gonna mention rows. That means we wanna do it by the row. And we see that our calculation has resulted in the right output. So you can see that we have the mix right here and this is nothing but the percentage. Now, one thing that you would often wanna fix in such kind of calculations is that you don't really wanna show 0 0.07 or 0.4, it's actually 40% and 7%. So how do you fix the percentages? So I'm gonna go back to the calculation in the makings. I'm just gonna click right here on the mix and say edit calculation once again. And then I'm gonna say, hey, this entire calculation needs to be formatted as a percentage. So I'm gonna go right here and I'll say, hey, I wanna format this and I wanna format this in what? I wanna format this as a percentage. So 0%, close the bracket and press enter and hopefully that formats it pretty well. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd like to give a big shout out about my courses on Power BI, especially DAX, modeling and the M language. I teach them in a very, very structured way. I try to give you the logic of understanding the problem, deconstructing the problem and then framing the solution of the problem. That logic helps you to understand the problem at hand that we're doing in the course. Not only that, but you can then take the logic and apply to your own cases as well, which is going to tremendously boost your confidence of solving your own data problems. Hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have benefited a lot. In case you're interested, the link is down in the description. Go back to the video. Now let's just take a look at that in case you wanted to do the same thing like contribution analysis via DAX, then how would you do that via DAX? So I'm gonna go over uh, back to the report and start writing a DAX calculation. All right, let's just start off by creating a simple measure and I'm calling that measure as a mix percentage and that is using DAX. Let's just also add a percentage sign right here. Now the idea is the same that I wanna take this particular number and I wanna divide it by the totals number, but I need to have both the numbers, the numerator as well as the denominator in the same context to be able to do this calculation. That means I wanna capture this number, which I obviously have it because that is total sales. I wanna divide that by this particular number, which is the total of the entire year. Now to be able to get to the denominator, the numerator is easy. To be able to get to the denominator, what I need to do is I need to be able 
able to write a calculation such that this number, which is the total of the entire year, appears in the first cell, the second cell, and the third cell as well. Now that is going to be done if I remove one of the filter context of the two filter context currently applied. So if you take a look at any value that appears in this particular cell, it's going to have two filters. One is going to be the year filter, the other one is going to be the region filter. Now if I happen to remove the region filter, the only one filter that I need to apply on the calculation is the year filter that is going to land me on this calculation, which then I will place it here, here, and here. So the only thing that I want to do is remove the filter of the calculation. So let's just start to write something. So I'm going to say, hey, I want to do a calculate of nothing but my total sales. I want to remove a filter. So I use the remove filters function. I want to remove the filter off of the region column in the sales table, close the bracket, press enter. And now if I happen to drag this calculation to my visual, let's just take a look at what do we get. Sure enough, we have gotten the two values that we were searching for. The numerator is right here, the denominator is right here, and we are pretty good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this particular calculation and I'm gonna say, hey, why don't you do the divide and divide my total sales by this particular denominator, which is nothing but my yearly total. Close the bracket, press enter. And now if I just take a look at my visualization, you're gonna see that sure enough, the answers do match. We can obviously format the measure as a percentage, but 7% matches 7%, 40% matches 40%, so on and so forth. After I have set the percentages format, the one question that you're going to see that is going to come into your mind, if you take a look at carefully, is that why is this 37% here? And why is this 100% here? Because at the moment, we are taking $18,000 and dividing it by $18,000. So we get 100%. But here, the $18,000 is taken and divided by the total of both the years. That means $49,000 is the grand total right here. So 18,000 when divided by the entire data total is going to give you 37% and 63%. Now, if you're okay getting 100% here, the calculation finishes right here. And that is your measure. But in case you would want to have sub uh, percentages calculated at the year level, then we need to make modifications to our DAX calculation. Let's just kind of revise the calculation for a bit. So at the moment, our calculation is kind of removing the filters from the region, but I want to selectively remove the filter whenever you reach the year level. So whenever you are at this particular level where we do not have any kind of region, that is when I don't want to capture 18,000. However, I want to capture 49,000 so that when the division happens, you don't land up with 100%, you actually land up with a 37%. Let's just see how can we do that. So I'm going to create two variables. So I'm going to say var, which is uh, my region total. And that is going to be nothing but this particular calculation, which is where I'm just finding the total of the region. The second thing that I'm going to do is create the year total. So I'm just going to go right here and say another var. And I'm going to say this is my year total. And the calculation for that is going to be, I'm going to say calculate and I'm going to say, hey, why don't you calculate total sales? But off of the total sales, I would now want you to remove two filters. The first filter is going to be this particular filter. So I don't really want the region filter. The second filter is going to be the year filter. I even don't want this two filter. So if these two filters are removed, that means there's no filter here. There's no filter here. You will obviously land up with whatever is the total right here of this table. So I'm going to say, hey, remove filters. And the first filter is going to be the calendar year that's gone. And then one more remove filter, which is going to be the region off of my sales table. Now, at the moment, I'm just going to go ahead and just do a return just to check that do I get the right result or not. I'm going to extract the year total real quick, press enter. Do I get the year total everywhere? Sure enough, I get it. It's a percentage. Please pardon me for that, but we do get the number right here. Now, the calculation needs to work fine. So here, I want to find the percentage of total of the year, but here, I want to find the percentage of the grand total. So how do we do that? Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find out that where are we in the pivot table at the moment. So I'm going to say something like if, and there happens to be a very interesting function called the in scope function. So in scope function takes a look that are you working in this particular scope or are you working in this particular scope. So I'm saying, hey, if you're in the scope of the region, that means your region is currently used in the summarization of the visual, then in that case, I want to do the divide calculation and I want to take the total sales and I want to divide it by my region total. But if you're not here, then I want to do the divide calculation and I want to take the total sales and I would want you to divide by, let's say, the year total. So uh, year total 
and that is going to be good enough. I'm going to close the bracket, press enter, and hopefully that gives me the right answer. Now, if you take a look at the two answers right here, of course, the percentages match along the way, and that is what we have. Now, obviously, you're going to ask me this question. Okay, we have learned two different ways of calculating percentage mix or percentage contribution. Which should we use? Now, here is where I would go for visual calculation preference, at least for this specific visual, because the visual calculation is slightly dynamic. Let me show you how. Tomorrow, if you decide that I don't really want to filter by region, I want to filter by channel, then you obviously expect your mix percentage to work fine. But because you have hard-coded the region in your DAX calculation, this is going to break, but this is going to work just fine. Let me show you. So if you just actually cancel out the region, and if you take the channel and put that in the rows section once again, you're going to see that, of course, this works just all right, but these answers are absolutely bad. They are not really the right answers. So the visual calculations, they just take a look at the very number they don't really care about what is there in the context. And here is where we have defined the context in our DAX. And that's why this calculation is not working properly. But this calculation, sure enough, is working just all right. Now, there is a slight nuance that I would want to talk about, especially when you're trying to do mixed calculations where you have to remove the bunch of filters, especially when one column is sorted by the other. Let me just talk about the example real quick. So you obviously understand if you worked with Power BI enough that when you create a date table, the months are not in particular order and you have to create a month index column to sort the months in a certain way. So if I just go over to my calendar table real quick, you're going to see that we have created this month index column and this index column, which is the number of every single month, Jan is 1, Feb is 2, March is 3rd, so on and so forth, is used to only sort this column the right way. And that's all that we have done. Now, when you're trying to remove the filter in your DAX calculation, you have to be very, very cautious of that. Let's just take a look at this in action. So if I were to create this particular calculation, which is called monthly mix, that means I'm trying to find out that what is this percentage of the total, then obviously I have to write the measure to find out what the total is, for which I want to remove the filter of the month. So I'm going to go something like this, calculate. I want to say, hey, I want to calculate total sales. Sure enough, the filter that I would like to remove is the month filter. So I'm going to say remove filters from the calendar month. I'm going to close the bracket, close the bracket, press enter. And once I drag this particular calculation, off to my visual, you're going to see that I do not get the right answer. So I just drag it. I'm expecting to see the yearly total right here. So I expect to see 18,327 across all of these cells so that I have the numerator and the denominator that the division can be carried out, but I don't get it. Now you don't get it because one column that you have ignored the filter on, which is nothing but the month column, is also sorted by the month index column and you need to remove filters from both of those columns. Be sure of that, it's a little nuance. People make ton of mistakes on this. So I'm gonna say, hey, remove filters, not only from the calendar month, but also from the sorted column, which is going to be nothing but my month index column. Now, the two filters are gone. Now, if I just commit on this particular calculation, you're going to see that we get the numerator and the denominator. And now, if you do the divide, it's going to work just fine. But if you prefer visual calculations anyways, please feel free to do that as well. The next most important calculation that a lot of people try to do is, year to date or YTD calculation. Let's just take a look at how do we do that in Power BI. So I obviously start with the simple pivot table, which is where we have year, we have the month, and against every single month, we have total sales presented right here. Now, I obviously want to find out that up until a current month, what is your YTD? That means if you are up until the month of May, what's the total of all of these months that should present be presented right here? And if you're against August, what's the total of all of these months that you have to write it right here? How do we do that running total that resets every single year, for which I have a very, very simple formula. I'm going to start to create this measure called sales YTD, and I'm going to start to write a very simple formula called total YTD. So I'll say total YTD, which is the formula that I tend to use. It asks you, hey, YTD for what? And the expression is nothing but my total sales. And the total sales is going to be calculated against a certain date, which is nothing but your calendar date. That's your date table. And that is literally pretty much it. Now, if we happen to drag this calculation off to your visual, you're going to say that the obviously get the YTD. If you scroll down, this is nothing but the running total. Scroll down all the way. The only problem that you're going to see is that you have these spillover effects. Now, because the calendar table or your date table is going to contain all the dates of the entire year, so your calculation is not really going to stop where your data ends. So my data ends in August. 
the calculation will keep on giving you the same number till the time the calendar table ends or your date table ends. How do we fix such a small issue? So we're going to create a simple column in our calendar table. Let me show you. So in my calendar table, I'm going to create this very simple column called is sales present. That means check is the sales there or is the sales not there? And that simple calculation is going to be, I'm just going to say that, hey, I want to find out the maximum value in the sales table, the date column. Give me the max value. Now the max value could be 26th August or 27th August or some date which is towards the end of August but not really the end of August. If you just take a look at it, sure enough I get 29th August but I want to push it to the end of August. So I'm going to use the EO month function to make it towards in the end. So EO month of the current month and that makes it 31st of August. Now I'm going to say that hey this date are you less than this particular sales present or not? If you're less that means the sales was there. So I'm going to say, hey, the calendar date, which is the row date right here, every single row, is that less than equal to the largest date in the sales table or not? If that is less, that means the sales was present. Now we get a bunch of trues and falses across in this column. And this is the true and the false that we're going to use to limit our calculation in the visual. So we go back to our calculation and in the calculation, which is uh, sales by ID, I'm going to wrap this around in the calculate function and mention one additional filter of the column that we have created, which is nothing but calendar is sales present. Close the bracket, press enter and sure enough the calculation stops right there. And the final calculation that a lot of people do is growth over last year. If current year, some month, some particular quarter, there is a value, how much growth has happened over the last year as compared to the same period? That's a very interesting one. So take a look at this visual that I am working with. We again have the same visual. We have the year, the month, and the total sales. And how do we find out that how much growth has happened over the last year? Now, obviously, I want to take a look at the Jan of the current year, which is the 2011 year, compare that to the Jan of 2012 and find out that how much growth has happened and that's the number that I want to put it right here. How do we do such a calculation? Well, if you think about it, if it were to do it over the back of the envelope, you'll pretty much pick up these two numbers, which is the first number and the second number, divide them, minus one, and that's your growth. Well, that's exactly what we are going to do, but there are obviously going to be slight nuances to that. So I'm going to create this measure called growth over last year, or goalie, and I'm going to say that, hey, the first thing that I want to find out is that I already have the current year sales, but I want to find out the last year sales. And once we have the two numbers, the current year and the last year, we would be able to find out the growth percentage. So let's just start with the last year sales. So I'll say I want to do the calculation, which is my total sales calculation, but I want to do it in a different context, which is same period last year. And for which I'm going to use the simple formula called same period last year. It asks you, hey, where are your dates? These are my dates, my calendar date and close the bracket and press enter. And I'm going to drag off this calculation to my visual. Now, once I drag this calculation to my visual, you can see that against 2012, which is this particular number, we don't get the current year number, but we get the last year number that was present last year. Now that we've been able to get the both the numbers, which is the current year number and the last year number, sure enough, we can just do a simple divide and find out the growth percentage. Let's just also do that. So I'm going to go over to my calculation and I'm going to say, hey, I'm trying to divide two calculation, which is nothing but my total sales calculation. And the next thing that I want to divide is nothing but my last year calculation. That is nothing but the calculate function. I do that, close the bracket and I say minus one, press enter. And this should give me the right result. Now, the number actually comes up in decimals, which I don't want it. I will convert that to a percentage. But if you still take a look at the output, it's 188%. It seems to be right, right here. But all of this it's kind of junk because you don't have the last year value here because that's the first year that we have. And there must be more junk values right here as well, which is where we don't have the current year number. So I want this calculation to be restricted to only work in when you have current year value and you have last year value. So let's just declare a couple of variables to do the check that you should have both the current year and the last year. And if both the numbers are present, please, by all means, do your divide calculation. So I'm going to go something like this. I'll say, hey, variable. And I'll say, what is my current year? My current year is nothing but my total sales. And I'll say, hey, variable, what is my last year? And that is nothing but my calculate function, which I will bring it from here and I will just move that upwards. That's my last year. And I'm going to say now I will just do my return and I'll say, hey, I want to check if both the numbers are present. So current year number is present and last year number is present. You can also write not equal to blank, not equal to blank, but I just prefer to just write the numbers. And if they are blank, they're automatically going to be omitted. Nice little hack. So now I'm going to say, hey, if both the numbers are present, then I want to do the divide calculation, which is divide the current year by the last year. And I'll say, 
minus one. Otherwise, just leave it as blank. And that's pretty much my calculation. I just drag it, drop it, and this actually gives me a limited visual, which is where I have the growth percentage only where the current year number is present and the last year number is present. If you've liked this video, then you're absolutely going to enjoy my next video on learning the most important DAX functions in a superb structured way. Watch it right here.